Nostalgia. Hey, it's the Good Geekish Podcast. I'm Derek. We got Bino over yonder. What's yo, up, yo, yo, yo. How, how do how, how do you? <laughs> I do good well, thanks. You much, Mary? Jeez Louise. <laughs> oh, man. Can, can you tell both of us used to actually talk for a living? That's what's funny about that, right? <laughs> I have conversations there's, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> there's There should be some more words in there. Oh, well. Somebody will get the point. Anyway, thanks for, uh, for tuning in and putting the podcast on. We appreciate it. We really uh, do. It's, it's lots of fun for this. You know, it's an excuse to get a chance to chat with you more or less. But uh, as Derek talked about, nostalgia is the the topic du jour this week. And uh, I want, how did you come up with this this plan that you want to talk about? Because I'm still a little wide eyed at this. Well, let me let me backtrack. Nostalgia is a cornerstone, a key piece of the Get Geekish podcast. Yes, we get geekish about a lot of different things, and nostalgia is one of them because I think that's something that everybody can relate to. So uh, let's dip into that little cauldron there of nostalgia, take a little sip, Mm, good soup, and let's go. Nostalgia is a noun, a sentimental longing or wistful affection for the past, typically for a period or place when happy personal associations. Thanks, Webster. (laughs) so what prompted this was i was streaming on twitch the other night and somebody brought up buttered bread as weird as that is that triggered a core memory in me that i had not thought about in years i'm not a big fan of butter and bread myself but growing up i had a friend and his family used to you know take a piece of white bread butter it up and eat it just eat it like that and actually i had a few friends that did this and it always kind of like weirded me out i was like well and that's maybe because i'm not a butter person but they didn't even toast it and apparently that was a thing and it got me thinking that was a thing of the 90s probably it was long long before the 90s that's that's that old oldie song (laughs) Like bread, butter. Yeah, it's a song of the fifties about that. I mean, that was a. I think I was that was one of the things because bread was is one of the staples, and uh, mm-hmm. you can go all the way back to like you know, the Depression era foods and stuff like that. Putting butter on bread was a way to take something that was simple and cheap and plentiful, and you know, doctor it up a little bit to give it some flavor. Exactly. Well, and, that, and <laughs> so that that triggered a core memory, which then started the discussion of birthday parties, right? And, and bear with me here. We're going to kind of jump all over the place with the nostalgia because that's something I, I just got to get off my chest. I'm just having a complete uh, JD from Scrubs moment of you call your core memories. So I'm trying to imagine whether your uh, core memories are run like inside out by the little angry guy or the little scared guy. That's why it's probably the scared guy, to be honest with you. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, birthday parties, nostalgia. We're going to keep on track. So so birthday parties apparently for me were different because some people are talking about like they would well for my wife for instance she grew up in scotland and in their village everybody was invited to the birthday party and had to partake um here we had a little bit different where like you could pick and choose unless it was like a class themed thing but you could pick and choose and like uh spoiler alert i was a huge nerd growing up and not really popular So I had like just my core friends that we hung out with and birthday parties for us would consist of sleeping over each other's houses, having nerf fights, staying up too late, playing video games and then eating like French toast in the morning or something along those lines. You know, one of my friends across the street, when we we'd we'd have birthday parties, we'd stay up all night in the basement just playing Sega Genesis and trying to beat a stupid level on a game called the haunting or something like that and then you know vice versa he'd come into our house we'd have like nerf fights and everything like that it it was a lot of fun but apparently that wasn't the case for some people they just went to birthday parties and had goodie bags when they left which was not a thing at any birthday party that i went to um i think the closest i got to a goodie bag was we went to one friend's house and there was i was actually invited to like the cool kids house kind of we went to pizza hut we saw I want to say hook in the theater. Mm -hmm. We had the land before time toys from pizza hut. We came back to his house. We watched Maverick with Mel Gibson of all movies on VHS, which then followed by like a whole bunch of staying up too late, everything like that. And then when like the parents went to bed, he pulled out a movie called Dr. Giggles, which I know, you know, (laughs) so we watched that (laughs) and I was like, what? And this is middle school, mind you. And I'm watching Dr. Giggles going, and I'm pretty sure I was the only one that stayed awake to this. It's like, guys, how could you fall asleep during this movie? It's weird. Anywho, 
So birthday parties for me are different. I never had the grab bags. Did you have something a little bit different? Maybe. Well, I depends. If I go younger, I definitely had a lot of the birthday parties that I had mm-hmm. went to, but it was like the same group of friends when I was yeah. in elementary school. The same of us that all played the same sports teams together. There was the same six to eight kids that were at every party for every kid for the entire year. But usually in like elementary school, birthday parties consisted of either going bowling going to the roller rink, or going to play laser tag. And that was pretty much the options for birthday parties. And occasionally somebody would do one at their house, but then it was lame because as a kid, you're like, well, I don't want to go to your stupid house. Oh, there's a couple of, like, there's like, like a Chuck E. Cheese birthday or two, but those were also, that was the when the rich kid that didn't really have a whole lot of friends, they'd invite everybody. <laughs> it seemed to be what happened to Chuck E. Cheese a lot. Um, anyway, but once See, you get I- a little bit older, once you get into middle school time, birthday parties were, it was sleep worse. Order, yeah. Have friends over, order pizza, eat a bunch of junk food, and stay up way too late watching movies that you probably snuck into your house that you shouldn't be watching. That was okay. So you and I kind of had the same thing. There it was like mm-hmm. with, with talking. Is like other people were like, no, we went to you know a part, you know a Chuck E. Cheese or something like that. There was goodie bags, and then you left. And sometimes it was a forceful invite. You know, I mean, we've all kind of lived the awkward birthday where you know you're not really welcome there <laughs> but it was like a i'm just here because your mom invited me <laughs> yeah that, that type of thing but like you know especially with you know in elementary school and middle school when they had the class ones and it was kind of awkward where they had to like if they sent out invites to certain people in the class they had to send it out to everybody so it was always the which then brings me down to my next core memory of like you brought up the roller rink Ooh, i had some birthday parties of the roller rink too i forgot about that yeah well, it, was you only, said only, it. it was one of the only things to do when it was really cheap too. So I'm being a lot of birthday parties because, and, and that's the thing is that's like I think that's why like the class when you, they invited the class, it was always something like the roller rink because laser tag in in Greeley wasn't really a thing until later on in the 90s, and it was a little bit more expensive to do. Uh, like we had some lock ins there with some other groups and everything like that, but for the birthday parties. The roller rink, and for some reason, again, that core memory, my little shaky guy going, (laughs) putting that back in my head. You know, we talked about that podcast where smells just bring back certain things. Well, this memory just brings back the smell of that roller rink, and all roller rinks smell the same, and I'm pretty sure they still smell the same. I mean, you and I went to my daughter's birthday, what, four years, five years ago, something like that? At the roller rink there in Fort Collins, and that roller rink smelled exactly like when we <laughs> when yeah. we were young. That stale popcorn. I think it's, it's, popcorn. The, it's the, the combination of stale circus food, shoe disinfectant, and whatever <laughs> oil they use to keep the bearings and the skates going. That plus, is combined together to create this this mystical aroma, if right, you will. Plus, like uh, <laughs> smoke still in there from the seventies. <laughs> It's amazing how big, when you're talking about that, I I looked at some of the the history of roller rinks, which was actually kind of fascinating. Um, Let's hit it. Well, they talk about the uh, the Massachusetts Massachusetts businessman James Plimpton invented the quad roller skates here in the States and became popular in the 19th century. Um, And then the post-World War II baby boom saw a boom in roller rinks across the U.S. So having a roller skating birthday party became some of a rite of passions in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Yeah. And they went a bunch of changes. In the 70s culture with the disco and the roller discos, they were a big deal for nighttime entertainment for adults, not just kids. Well, I was going to say, that, isn't there a movie, Electric Boogaloo, that's kind of based off of that or something? I think, some... a, I, think, I think a lot of 70s movies were. That was just oh. slightly before my time. <laughs> yeah. So Roller Skating Me was a kid's birthday place, and a lot of people now, which I think is hilarious that like on TikTok right now, roller skaters are making a huge comeback of all these things going on. And all I can think of in my brain is I, I hate... I don't want it to be judgmental, but I see people that are roller skating with this, like, look how cool I am. Like, what is, what is this, like 1974? Put on your high waisted pants and, like, let's get, why, why are you doing this? And it's just where my brain goes because everyone, when I was a kid that went roller skating, if you went roller skating and thought you were the cool kid roller skating, you were probably about 10 years too late to the party. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I remember when, we, when I was a kid, roller blades were just being a thing. So. Yeah. There wasn't a thing of, oh, quads are better than rollerblades. Rollerblades were the new hotness. They were super expensive, but you had to have special ones at roller rinks because you had roller blades with exposed uh, screws. You couldn't bring them out of the roller because they'd tear up the floor. They'd kick you mm-hmm. right out for that. So and if you a- didn't have a break on your rollerblades either, they would kick you out too. 
Well, not kick you out, but you have to. the longbow one, we had to take the brake off of our roller blades. Oh, really? Mm Mm-hmm. Because the roller the roller blade bricks were made for roads, so they had the black stuff that came off on the floors. Oh, so you yeah. weren't allowed to have those brakes on the roller rink when I was at. You want to stop? There's the wall. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, no, I, 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 the wall is a funny thing. You say that because I think that's how I learned to skate well. Is because going to the rink, you're on the super flat ground where you could just stand there, and somebody gives you a little push, and you'll go ten or fifteen feet. Mm-hmm. But then you go in fast, and they had those concrete walls with the super super thick glossy paint in the rounded tops that were about three feet tall. So if you were going real, real fast, you could just ram into one and you, you, your, your head could flop over without giving you a concussion. And <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, the, the one in Greeley, I'm pretty sure like the walls were kind of like that weird felt carpet type uh-huh, the, of thing. The soundproofing stuff from the inside of a warehouse. Yeah, but it, it wasn't even like soundproofing. It was just, I don't know, it was weird. Like you'd go up and like chunk of it would come out of your head because I'm pretty sure it was there in the, in the 70s. But um, it's funny because that was the thing too is like, When you go to the birthday party, you could tell who had the money because roller rinks weren't at the time. They didn't have roller blades to put out, right? You couldn't you couldn't rent a roller blade. You had to rent that canvas four wheel monstrosity with bright orange wheels and the bright orange stopper in the front, which I'm pretty sure is still a staple at every roller rink, right? I think so. I don't think that's ever changed. I I did go no because I think the one I went to one roller rink somewhere for. A birthday party for the kids eight ten years ago something like that and they had different colored skates they were like white or grayish colored skates and i was dumbfounded because i'd never seen rental <laughs> skates that were not canvas brown with bright orange wheels <laughs> right well and you know exactly what i'm talking about like i mean if you if you've been to a roller rink if you've been to a birthday party if you've experienced the joy of the roller you know exactly what i'm talking about they hand it to you and for whatever reason it's really stiff on the side, but the top is just floppy. So you put your ankle in it. You're like, oh, I'm going to break an ankle on this easily, mm. easily. So <laughs> then with that, you're sitting there, you're skating along. Doesn't quite fit right. You try to go get the next size, either down or up. Still doesn't fit right. So you just kind of they, they didn't carry half sizes. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> you had to compromise. You either like had your toes, you know, like this. If you're watching the video, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Scrunched up. And if not, your toes are like free reign. And then when they play Van Halen Jump, everybody. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they still play that song at Roller Rigs, right? Well, I, I still have you, you. You speak of those core members bringing things See? back. I can still think of those times going around the roller rink because we had all the times there was school parties were at roller rinks. There were lock ins at the roller rink. There were birthday parties. At the rink, there was all these special events, and the music was just the eighties was a good time for music going around. Mm-hmm. And there'd be these jams, even ones that were guilty pleasures. You're sitting there going around skating. You just hear it come on. You're like. Yeah, I remember when the Ghostbusters song came around. I just go nuts. I'm like, yeah, and you're sitting there, you're skating as fast. You're like, ah. and no one else cares, but you're just running around like. <laughs> and no one, and I mean no one, not even like top DJs like Tiesto or Skrillex or anything like that, has that power of that that feeling of power as a roller rink DJ because they sit there, they can play the jams. You see them up there, you know, up in that DJ booth, do, do, do kids like going around, boom. Hey, can you play? And they're like, gotcha. You know, cause I mean, I forgot about the DJ in the corner. Oh yeah. Dude. Oh. I mean, cause that was the thing is like, at, and I don't remember the skating rink in Greeley. It was by Warnica West, but the DJ was that the, was, was that the one that was over by Island Grove or was it a different one down there? No, this one was over okay. by the uh, golf course. Off okay. Of, I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway, the DJ booth was in the corner. I'm pretty sure it was made out of plywood because every kid would go up, run into it, and it made that made that thunk that you just you can hear. And they'd be up like, I mean, and the music's blaring because they have those two big speakers that are just way yeah, too they, big. There weren't right nice there. sound systems around. Mm-hmm. It was just a giant arena with like six really loud speakers on yep. one end or the other. <laughs> and they'd be like, hey, can you play that song that makes you go jump? jump 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 you know and, and you know they're not talking van halen and everything but people love it but you know those so you're sitting there and the, that dj had so much power you could tell that they just didn't they're like boom as soon as they play something <gasps> everybody's just like yeah you know skating around 15 miles an hour yeah you get that one person who gets jazzed up and they start doing 30 miles an hour and then the ref blows the whistle out and goes no 
<laughs> yeah, the fact that the the, uh, the the refs, as you call them, always had to have the referee jerseys on going around, too. Like, why? I don't know what else to call them, dude. <laughs> I mean, you had to know that they were an employee, and I don't know why they gave them a ref jersey. I mean, maybe it was because, uh, you know, after this, we got roller derby. We got, I, don't, I don't know. But it was always funny because they them with the DJs had that power because all of a sudden they'd blow the whistle and that meant well they could reverse. kick you out if, if they blew the whistle and put you in a timeout and had to do it two or three times you were done you had to mm-hmm. turn your skates and you had to leave you, I don't or care they'd like blow I don't, it I don't twice. care if you paid for the lock and you're out <laughs> right <laughs> or they'd blow it twice which meant everybody had to reverse which never made sense to me why they would Ugh, reverse it it was so I awkward that because nobody knew how to do it You'd have, and I'm not kidding, you'd have those people who are just focused in doing 15 miles an hour, just getting in the zone, skating around and around, and then they do the double whistle to go counterclockwise, and everybody's all doing the clunky, like, stops, and you got kids falling down, grandma's over there with the walker crying, you know, and it's just, they're all doing that, and the people who are in the zone are like, <sighs> and they just keep going for, like, two more laps until they get yelled at. I was I was one of those kids. Uh, I <laughs> I never learned to skate well. I loved going to the roller rink. I owned rollerblades. I was terrible at them. But I taught myself to skate by going to the rollerblade and around. So I learned to go in one direction. So I basically learned to skate just by pushing off of my right leg. So when okay. we had to do the opposite one, I most of the time just quit because I couldn't push with my left leg. I didn't quite grasp how. So as soon as we turned around, I just looked like I'd never skated before trying to get to the side of the rink and get off to go play go play Galaga or Choplifter or something. Right. And, well, and every skating rink, too, also seemed to have like that quarter wall where people could just watch. Mm-hmm. Like you had the, the benches along the side and then you have the quarter wall. And that quarter wall is usually when they did the double whistle to turn around, that quarter wall was just nothing but doom, 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 doom of people <laughs> hitting it to turn around. And you were one of them. I was, I was. I, I did like some of the games, though. Did they play the the games at the Royal Rick you went to as a kid? They'd stop it every once in a while. They'd do, like, the limbo, and then they'd have mm-hmm. some races, and they sometimes they'd play four corners with some big giant foam dice. We would do, they did the limbo, which I sucked at. Um, yeah. They would do something kind of along the lines of Simon Says and Red Light, Green Light type of oh, thing. Oh, I remember, yeah, they did Red Light, Green Light too. I'm not talking Squid Game rules, so thankfully for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, the, way, the way people tried to stop it was pretty close. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that, or they did yeah, like, stop. <laughs> were the ones that they would try to go, you know, as soon as it, you could tell them to get that like speed skating stance and they're all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they had that and then they would do some of like the trick skating or like how long can you go backwards or whatever, which always made me feel inadequate because I can't skate backwards. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have those people who are just like gliding. I'm like, come on. Um, go back to ice skating. Right. <laughs> you were big in the 80s and the 70s. Uh, um, and then and then there's just the, always the, the fun songs where they made you jump, which again, you could tell the people who had more confidence. And sometimes I did have more confidence where I'm like, you know, do the little jumps. And then I'm like, you get into it and you go jump and you jump. And all of a sudden your wheels just go <laughs> and they make see, that sound. See, tie in with my lack of skill. I was never much of a jumper. <laughs> <laughs> Jump was like, put my hands up in the air. That's that's as much as I got. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did for a lot, of, a lot of the times. But then, you know, it was it was one of those ones where. I got a little more confidence and I jumped and you, you get that wheel to catch. I mean, every once in a while too, they don't, it was never swept properly. Cause every once in a while you'd get like a little pebble. They would just like stop you. Um, but I remember when I was, when I got rollerblades, I <laughs> thought I was the cool kid, but here's the problem is when I had rollerblades, my parents made me wear the wrist guards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so here I am at the roller rink and I have my wrist guards and my knee pads on. And I'm like, yeah, guys, what's up? <laughs> True nineties fashion right there. Well, it, it's funny. When we were kids. The roller rink could be packed with people mm-hmm. and there might be a person or two in a helmet and there was a good chance they were very little or somebody that had already had severe brain trauma or some sort of disability or something like that. I don't if you go, if I you go to the roller rink now, <laughs> if you go to the roller rink now, it's the exact opposite. You're hard pressed to find somebody not wearing some sort of protective gear. Well, that was the I mean, that was the thing is my parents were like, you can't rollerblade unless you wear the like the, the wrist guards and everything like that. Back and, then, and, like, you, and you and you hated that, but there was one crash that made you say, thanks, mom, huh? Oh, I mean, yeah, there was definitely a time where I sprained my wrist, even just, you know, not on the rollerblades, just on the skates without writing. And I'm like, ooh. I mean, because we've all felt that. But I mean, 
That's the thing. And there was something also about the roller rink food. You sit in that plastic, what, picnic tables, you want to call them? The booths? I don't yeah, even they, know. They, that... they, they called them seats, but it was just a mm -hmm. piece of shaped plastic That was very bench. uncomfortable. Yeah, and it was, yeah, it was, it was not comfortable. But my roller rink had the most terribly wonderful slush puppies <laughs> known to mankind. I think that's every roller rink like <laughs> you, you, they're, people they're, are like they're too wet to actually be slushies or icies but they're too sugary to be anything oh else they just say oh god get a little grape put on there like oh this is amazing yeah it's it's all and you're sitting there like the rest of the skating like just twitching you're like this is good but yeah i mean it, it's it's funny because i know that other people have experienced this but it's just kind of crazy because i can i can smell those cheap hot dogs that they had i can smell that stale popcorn that you always thought was a good idea and then you'd get it you're like nope this is awful <laughs> okay picture this you've been a big long day of skating three hours straight on that rink right okay. you can walk over it's time to go you take your skates off you start walking on the ground and that Oof. feeling of like I, I don't know where the floor is <laughs> <laughs> oh man well that's that's crazy too because like you know, rollerblades felt a little bit different because they went higher up on your ankle. So when you take them off, you just have that decompression. Because <laughs> I mean, you'd like always sit there unfurls. <laughs> yeah, you'd always sit there and go, "My my skate isn't tight enough." Because the rollerblade had that ratchet, right? So you just sit there ratcheting, ratcheting, ratcheting. You don't think anything of it, and you take your skate off, and it just feels like your whole ankle just goes. <laughs> oh, there's blood in my toes again. Imagine that. <laughs> oh, that made. Oh man. You're not, you're not kidding about this because now I'm, you mentioned earlier the shag carpet and where we changed our skates and ours mm -hmm. had a bunch of round tables. They were probably like construction spools that were bolted to the ground and the top was covered in really, really long shag gray, shag red fabric. Yep. Those were probably real dirty. <laughs> I guarantee you. I guarantee you, man. Nothing was clean. I mean, you know, every once in a while you'd be lucky enough if you got there early. What are you talking about? Shag? You just got to vacuum it. That's right. good. <laughs> well, I, the, you'd be lucky enough every once in a while to get there when they just polished the rink. I the hated floor. that. I know. I hated it too because it, it made slippery. me. slippery. Oh my God. And they, they, like they polished it like a bowling alley, dude. <laughs> you walk out there. Like, oh, whoa. And but if, you, you, if you fall, you get back up and then your hands have oh, that, sh that sheen stuck to them for the rest of the day. So if you go and try and play a video game, you can't even grab the control. <laughs> for the, and, if, and you're not kidding. It's for the rest of the day. You can, When you eat something, you taste it because it does not wash off. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. And then every once in a while, you'd get, you know, like you said, go play the arcade. With your skates, you're sitting there doing the back and forth with your feet while you're playing Street Fighter or something. The good see, old days. See, see, this before I didn't have Street Fighter money because when I was playing there, the big games we I always played Galaga. I would almost always get the high score when I do that, and they'd have Choplifter and Foosball, and then there was uh, not Rad Racer, was it Endura Racer or something like that? And then Road Blasters, the one where it's a racing game, but you could actually blow up the other cars. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. Later on, they'd get, like, what, cruising world or whatever, but you'd have to take your skates off for that, which kind of meant everything smelled like a dirty sock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of taking skates off, I always wondered, like, you'd walk around with your skates on doing everything. You're eating, you're doing stuff, you're going playing games, all that kind of thing. Go but in the, the bathroom. bathrooms, yep. <laughs> you kept your skates on onto a <laughs> tile floor. Like miniature bathroom tiled floor. How was that a good idea? How did more people not die in the bathrooms of roller rinks? Like, <laughs> um, I don't know. There was definitely times where it didn't feel safe. There's also I mean, times though too where you go in there and you're like, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't sanitary. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I went to school with these elementary and middle school kids. And I'd seen what a bathroom looks like with people staying in regular shoes. Yeah. <laughs> like, hold up now. <laughs> just a little, somebody at the uh, gate like, no, no, take your skates up before we're in there, buddy. But just, just trust me. <laughs> well, and that's the, going back to the, like, if you have a birthday party there, you know, you have that one kid who's just sitting there shoveling cake down and then going back out and like zoom. And you're like, how, how is this a good idea? But it was always awkward too at the, at the skating rinks too, because if you went there for a birthday party, it was usually you and like a group of at least 10 people. Right. Mm hmm. You had to find some place to sit down. You had to find some place to put all the presents. And it was always kind of an awkward, like, what time are we eating? What time are we doing this type of thing? Oh, go, we'll call you over. And then they do the the DJ, 
again get that moment of power of like, hey everybody, it's time for Adam's birthday. We're lighting the candles down. You know, everybody could just get all excited and they'd go over there and be like, hey, happy birthday. And then like they'd do a birthday thing for him real quick, a birthday skate, and then that's it. And then he'd go back to like, huh, all right, I'm gonna go hang out with the person that I do care about. So <laughs> peace. <laughs> It's kind of sad there's not more roller rinks around. I was just looking up at the uh, the number of roller rinks that are still around. Mm-hmm. There's actually a website uh, for U.S. roller skating rinks by state called Do It in the Americas. And so you can look that up. On, in Colorado, there's only seven roller skating rinks left open at all. What, what, what cities? Uh, let's see. We've got Aurora, Colorado Springs, Boulder, Fort Collins, uh... Arvada, Arvada. Oh, wait, sorry, there's two more because uh, Skate City of Colorado has six rinks. Oh, okay. one, one in Colorado Springs, no, two in Colorado Springs, one in Aurora, one in Littleton, and one in Westminster. So there's like 11 left in Colorado. But there's one not in Greeley anymore? That's a bummer. No, that one's been closed for a while. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, you know, it's the thing with getting older that our parents had to deal with of things from our youth are just going away. But, uh, also, though, I, 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 I wonder if they might make a comeback because like they, they it's, it's been cyclical. It was big in the 50s and 60s, huge in the 70s, and then it kind of tapered off the 80s and came down the 90s, and then it's kind of going off. And now, like you said, with the, if you look on the TikTok and YouTube shorts trends, stuff, I've got people that are skating, and the populated things like roller derbies making a huge comeback again. Like, it never really left, but it, it seems to be getting a little more popular again. And I know a lot of people that are... That, Brag on social media time about the new the new set of quads they got last week and putting pictures of these skates that it, it's it's becoming a thing and maybe somebody will find a place. I I just think maybe they need to change the business model a little bit so it's not just a daycare center for people where they can break their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Come skate and have fun by day at night. Get ready for the down and dirty roller derby, which we have done and it hurts. So kudos to you if you do that. Yes, we um, uh, we were we were blessed to 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 try roller derby back in the, mm. the radio days. We reached out. We didn't out even do a full force, man. We didn't even go. You know, no, they, they they invited us to their practice and they kind of showed us the ropes of how they do their warm ups and things for a while and train each other. And then they had a strap on helmets and skates and then showed some moves. I remember uh, when we got hip checked. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, we had, we had Kier, Kier, the next Kirsten. Day. Kirsten was her name. She was. I mean. I, 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 unassuming she was not a big burly muscly girl like that Mm-mm. but she put on skis okay watch this and she just threw a hip check and threw myself eh, four or five feet to the right i'm like what what right and that she didn't even go plus ultra man it was just like a little like just there was just you. a little like bank see what happens now what happened i was really trying i don't know it hurts <laughs> We'll we'll leave you with that image right there of us flying. But I mean, hopefully this trigger. I've still got videos of it. I can put it up with the pot with the, the blog. Nice. So there, if you listen this far, bonus, go to the website and you can see us falling over doing roller derby a <laughs> decade ago, decade and a half. I don't know how long it was. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that made my hip hurt again. <laughs> I should try anyway, that again. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> no, no. Let's 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 leave that one in the past. Um, but I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe roller roller rinks are coming back. Hopefully something that I spouted about triggered a core memory for you. Did you eat buttered toast or buttered bread? Not even toast, just buttered bread. Because that's what started this whole thing for me is I went down a weird nostalgia rabbit hole there where my little nervous guy was like, here's a core memory. Here's a core memory. Here's a core memory. So. And this, know. ladies and gentlemen, is how our brains work. <laughs> it truly is. <laughs> nostalgia. It's a good thing. Let us know at Get Geekish. Go the buttered toast route. Go the roller rink route. I just want to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, what 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 brought back some memories for you? And uh, thank you so much once again for tuning into the Get Geekish podcast. We'll thank talk you. to you next week. Bye. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening. We truly appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast. Find us on social media at Get Geekish. And if you want more podcasts, we got plenty of them. <laughs>